evening. Welcome to the Selectmen's meeting for March 5th, 2019. Can I get a roll call, please? Wayne Miller here. And Sue Lissio is here. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. like to inform everyone that the meeting is being tape recorded and I'm very glad of that because it's just us tonight. Um, anyone else taping? No. Chairman's additions or deletions? We have a slightly revised agenda mainly because I forgot to put some stuff down under, under me. Um, public comment period? Anyone? No. Appointments and hearings, and we're early. Does the Townsend Housing? Hmm. Let's um. Let's jump down to 2.2. Don't think it's going to take too long. Um, with us, in, in for those of you who don't know, this is um, Attorney Kate Federoff. She's our Labor Council and fills in and do, does a whole bunch of other little things in between. And, um, and we asked Kate to come and talk to us about the cable access. Shall I come and sit up sure. here, or should I speak over here? Well, if you, 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 you choose to sit in one of those uh, uh, chairs, you'll have a microphone available. So. Okay, and it will pick me up then. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good evening. Um, Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, I don't know, there were two issues was, I was tasked that I should take a look at. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you would like to discuss both of them or which one. What I was primarily concerned with, and I think Wayne too, was the access part of it. Because there are a number of houses, and I don't think it's a very big number, mm -hmm. that have been waiting for a very long time sure. for cable sure. and, uh, you know, for internet. Yep. Um, and we haven't been successful as much as we've tried to, to get there. So I just want to know where are we mm -hmm. and where do we need to go and how do we get there? Okay. So Jim provided me a couple of documents to look at with that question in mind. Specifically, he provided the license agreement as well as um, a letter between uh, correspondence between the town and the cable company. Um, the license agreement, if, if they're the properties that I'm thinking about that Jim highlighted, which surround a pond, is mm -hmm. that, that the location? Okay. So these locations, which are a little further out, um, are not covered in the license agreement because under the license agreement, in order to create access to the to houses, it has to meet a certain density requirement and all of this stuff. But the town was cognizant of that. Um, limitation when you negotiated the license agreement. So as a consequence, it appears to me that the town worked with the cable company to essentially agree to a process to get access to these folks. Mm -hmm. um, that process required the town to officially request that access be provided to those residents, and it had a two-year time frame to notify the cable company to do that. And then, in turn, the cable company would um, send an estimate, a cost estimate, to the town. And um, upon acceptance by the town um, uh, of the estimate, essentially hiring your contractor, as you would for house construction or whatever you're hiring someone for, by accepting that estimate and remitting the funds, the cable company was required to do that in 18 months. The piece of information that I don't have is any further correspondence from the town, absent that initial letter outlining the process. So the question I have for you all is whether or not that first step was initiated by the town and whether or not an estimate was received by the town. That's not anything that's here, right? No. <clears throat> Just as far as I know, we haven't. The, the, the it hasn't what, been done. What ha was what's happened was we suppose we contracted with a lawyer last year. Yep. 
to start the process and be the representative for that. Okay. And it never worked out. Okay. So now we're starting from square one again. Starting from square one. And that's okay. I mean, so that two year window has closed that they essentially locked in the process. It closed in 2017. They locked in the process or they locked in they, the they, bid process? They laid out the bid process. So meaning okay. you had to notify the cable company within the first two years of the license agreement. The license agreement began in 2015. So that two years would have expired in 2017. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't mean we're without possibilities. What we could do on your behalf, if you so authorized us, um, is we could reach out to the cable company, contact them, and say, you know, listen, here, here we are. This is a process we'd like to pursue. It benefits them in the sense that they're going to get new customers and the town is absorbing the infrastructure costs. So, um, you how know, is the town absorbing the infrastructure? That's how it's laid out, uh, Sue. That's if you look at, aside. that's the money that we set aside, and and that was for what? For the cable itself? I just found out from Wayne that you had pulled out one hundred and thirty thousand dollars from user fees um, to. And I'm not sure if if it was spelled out correctly. I'd have to look at how you collected those funds, but. Uh, you know, presumably that $130,000 could be used for this access expansion, but I'd have to dig into that a little more deeply because the question is, is that $130,000 going to be used to the second part of the question, which Jim had raised to me, um, to establish a nonprofit corporation to manage the local access piece of cable? Um, so. As you know, there are um, government access channels, educational access channels, and your, your local access channels, the PEG. Um, and some cable companies organize and manage that for you and have the you know, equipment. Which they did. Which they did. But with this new licensure agreement, they negotiated that the town would actually assume that role, which also is quite common. So. The question becomes, is that $130,000 that you collected for the purpose of establishing that 501c3 to manage and operate the local access um, programming, or is it for um, building the infrastructure to provide service to the folks around the pond? So if you were to contact Comcast, I'm sure they have I'm sure they have documentation. And they would say it from their point of view. Oh, yeah. No, and I'd have okay. to look at it and formulate my own opinion. Right. Um, there's one other piece. Yeah. And the piece that we kept running into, as I recall, had to do with the, um, um, the poles, the, the actual ownership. telephone poles. The oh. ownership. The ownership of the poles. OK. Unitel owns the poles. Yep. And there was talk of needing to relocate the poles or add poles and yeah, add, or add. Add poles or access to those because since Comcast didn't own them, they were like, well, we need to get access. It was just. A, they need a license agreement with Unitel. Right. Which right. they already have. Yeah. So Excuse me. Kathy was on the. It on was to the make cable ready poles. Okay. That were in existence, correct? Right. Isn't that right? The this poles is Jerry Reset. He's also on the committee. Hi, Jerry. Um, the poles around the pond only. Or are you talking about poles townwide? I'm not exactly sure where they are. Oh, okay. There are seven that were noted as being unable to put another line on, so they would have to be replaced, basically. And I, I thought that I thought they said something the about that, right? Well, we were just talking that. about that. Maybe you could just repeat that 130,000. Sure, piece. sure. So, so what I've understood from a conversation I actually just had with Jim and with um, Wayne was that $130,000 has been collected from from your Comcast users, right? Um, and the question I have, and I'd have to look at. To, and it depends in part on how it was billed out to the customers and you know what the intention was, was what is that 130,000 dedicated for? So there are two pieces or two issues that the town has to deal with. The first being establishing a 501c3 corporation um, to manage the PEG programming. 
and secondly to deal with the access for the folks around the pond who aren't served because they're not in this densely populated area or or more densely populated area or they don't have they're too far in terms of linear feet from the service line so so what I don't know is what that $130,000 is dedicated to, but I could figure it out. Um, Do you have the original paperwork that we did with Comcast or anything? The, the contract? We can't find it. it. Kind of the exit contract, I guess, is really what we're looking for. Because I'll tell you the documents that I was provided, and it's, and it's sort of limited in that I have the new renewal so the one that's active for the licensure. Okay, I, don't, I couldn't find that one. Oh, I have that, I can email that to you. Oh, great, yeah. that would be wonderful. I think the easiest thing to do is have the answer to the contact Comcast and get the ball rolling on the second. I, I think so, and, and maybe, yes, Kathy, nice. could, could your committee maybe work directly with, with Kate too? Sure. To, to see what you have for, um, for documentation. Okay. I know you guys have been working on this for a long time, but it's yes. almost like we've got to recreate got to recreate what we have here. Okay. Because I, the, other than that, I only have like four letters between Comcast and the town. Okay. Um, so any information that you had would be super helpful. And then if you authorize me to reach out to Comcast, I can get the ball rolling on both fronts. Or I guess now three fronts, right? So extending coverage to the folks around the pond, Number two is um, I can't set up, I don't know if you want me to get into this piece, um, but I can't set up the 501c3 corporation for you because obviously that would be a conflict for me, but I can forward along some documents that other communities have used. Okay. To I think I'd rather, I, I mean, and the reason we had you in is let's concentrate on, on that on first access. part, okay. on the access part first. It, and it's not just people around the pond, there are other See, that's what people. I wondered, isn't uh, there? We, yeah, Old Turnpike Road. Uh, <laughs> you, oh, right. Are you <laughs> waiting? <laughs> um, he doesn't have it, and there's okay. no poles down. He has underground wires. Correct? Utilities. Yeah, utilities. Okay. So there's no yeah, pools, pools to make too. ready where he is. Okay. Okay. So all of this information will be super helpful, and you and I can correspond. I can give you my card, and we can correspond via email. Okay. And get this ball rolling if you authorize me on all three fronts dealing with the pools, the um, He's got a the right access to the, so the residents who don't have it, and the too. peg issue. The clerk is taking the minutes tonight. <laughs> I move the board authorize town council to contact contact Comcast um, to de determine next steps on um, poll access, ac uh, public access, and the PEG Corporation. And to work with and to work with the cable committee. To work directly with the cable committee. Okay. Okay. Um, Did Jerry has some questions. So just sure. now. To get, to, we're going to get the ball rolling. That's great. So, what can we do to help that? Uh, what do you need from us? First that? thing is documentation. Any and all documentation you have, just forward me um, by email. Yeah, I I did second that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Just, just is that complete? Yes. Okay. Um, no, the the motion is okay. <coughs> For what you need to do, right? Yes. Okay. So, and I'm seconding it. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that's done. Okay. Okay. So hopefully we'll get this moving along. All okay. right. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <coughs> and Kate, you're available if if they wanted to have a meeting and, and conference you in, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm I'm okay. available by phone. I could be conferenced in, or if it's you know something where we feel like we need a face to face, I can drop down. Okay. All right. All right. I'll be in touch with you. I'll talk to Stan. He's the chair. Okay. And um, see you know what a good time frame is for a meeting, and then I'll find out from you what your dates. Fantastic. Are yeah. Available. That okay. sounds great. All right, Perfect. that would be great. And can you guys just, when you have something, let us know? Mm. Absolutely. So that we can talk about it? Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. That's me. That's me. <laughs> you can stay there if you like. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can stay there. Because they stole your seat. <laughs> That's true. I know. <laughs>
Um, and I'm not sitting up there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to, so that's 2.2 is done. Um, 6.10 and we're just a couple minutes late, but better late than early, I guess. Uh, joint meeting with the Towns and Housing Authority to appoint Kevin Smith effective March 5th, 2019 to the next annual town election, which is just in a couple of months. Um, I mean, a, yeah, a couple of months now, right? A couple of months, yes. Yeah. Um, Chaz, and actually, Kate, I'm going to ask you, <coughs> Towns and Housing Authority, joint meeting, but... I'm the only one that showed up. Okay, but I don't think they need a quorum. It, you don't no have point. appointment authority, so you just need your quorum to okay. vote to appoint. That's what I thought. And you post just as a prophylactic measure to yeah. make sure that if a quorum of you showed up, you wouldn't be in violation of open meeting law. So you're good. Okay. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, thank you very much for, for hearing us today and taking so the you, time. You have a, a, a person who's volunteered. Yes, and you Kevin. simply need us to 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 a point, correct. Kevin um, was has been on the board before. Uh, he stepped down because of personal reasons. He was going through some issues, and he has approached us saying that he is interested in coming back onto the board because of his expertise and some of the avenues that we're looking at. We could definitely use his help. Excellent, it's wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. I move the board appoint Kevin Smith effective March fifth, two thousand nineteen, until the next annual town election. Which is uh, April 22nd. April 22nd, 2019. I will second that. Any discussion? Oh, thanks for volunteering. Uh, yes, many thanks. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Um, 2.11 warrant article discussion, Towns and Housing Authority. And that, I think we have. Uh, that was submitted yes. too, so you should have received that. Um, we had talked to town council in regards to uh, uh, assisting us in drafting the warrant article. Uh, again, this is for a first step for the additional, the 11 plus acres that are over on Dudley Road. Um, we are looking to build a low to moderate income housing in that particular facility. Uh, in order for us to move forward and to see where we can fund this particular project, we are looking to um, uh, adjudicate this to uh, allow the Board of Selectmen to um, um, allow us so that uh, you would take it out of the, the current trust that it's in to allow you to allow us to be able to go uh, to do feasibility studies, things that we need to do on the land before we even uh, decide what we need to do for the next project. And to see if the land can be used for Absolutely, purposes, and how much right? of the land can be used. Okay. Um, so this is the transfer that Adam talked about before that's that correct. needs to occur so that we know where we're going. That's this. correct. Um, in the, the last town, uh, town meeting, we kind of put the cart before the horse. So now we're kind of rectifying it and saying we, we have the horse in front of the cart now. Okay. Uh, and this is the first step. This will take a few months from my understanding of it, which will allow us to be able to finish the grant writing that we're doing and looking into the other avenues. Mm, okay. Um, I don't think you need to vote from us. Okay. No, um, it's the placeholders already. Yeah, the placeholders already on the warrant. Okay. But, um, okay, this makes sense. Okay. This makes sense. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Now we're early again. <laughs> um, if you don't mind, can we skip down to, um, hmm, that's not going to, okay. Yeah, I know. Well, let's skip down to, um, I want to leave 3.1 because that might take a few more minutes. Yep. Um, 3.2. Don't to appoint a selectman's representative for collective bargaining. I ask that this be on the agenda just to make sure we're crossing all our T's and dotting all our I's. I move to appoint Sue Lizio as the <laughs> selectman's representative for collective bargaining. It's so Should many to me choose notes. from. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. Um, I'm humbled by that nomination. Um, this is only if 
for some reason when we're doing this you can't join us yep. okay so this is just to make it official all right does that make sense to everybody so you moved it i will second it any other discussion good luck <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That was easy. We need one of those little buttons. Uh, <laughs> okay. Any suggestions there? 620. Do we have any of the police department here? Police department. Want to start since you guys are both sure. here? Sure. So we'll start with 2.5. Talk to us about your budget. Sure, yeah. Actually, we could use that. I think I've got a handout that will help clear up questions before they even get started. So you're not to humor into that. Rudimentary as it is, just the thought bubbles are which playing some of the wider uh, swings. Can you read it? Can you read it? Oh. And then I know the uh, issues the conversation comes handy to end with a conversation about the number of employees we have, so I think that would uh, start the questions for you now. Jay, could you give me one second? Sure. Did you need me again? Or? Yes, we just wanted to uh, bring up one thing. Uh, we were on the agenda for 620 today is our understanding right and we sent out emails and asked neighbors to come and a lot of them did oh and I'm sorry they walked in and found out the meeting was already over so I'm sorry we know some of them have questions if you would like to entertain a couple Okay. Do you want to start with questions? Do you want to start with a review of what we talked about? A review. Okay. Yeah, yeah, what we review. talked about, um, this, this is Attorney Federoff. She's here to kind of help us unravel where we were and where we need to go. Um, and Kate explained that she's missing some documentation. We're hoping that the cable committee has a good amount of that because they've been doing this for some time. Um, but basically trying to put the puzzle back together and say where did we get that when we got the hundred and thirty thousand dollars from Comcast specifically what was that earmarked for or was it earmarked for something specific two things are possible that it was specifically for the extension of access and the other one would be that it was possibly for setting up the, the corporation. Or maybe it's a combination of both. Okay, so we need to get some clarification on that part. Um, you have a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering um, how, and I know I should let you finish, but That's okay. this has been going on for some period of time. I know, it's so annoying. What, what's the, why the specific documentation now? Why wasn't it? Why wasn't this uh, questioned and, and said to be something that was needed? Unfortunately, sometime? there isn't one person who has everything. Yeah. Okay, it just it just languished, and um, I think my opinion is that um, I think there was some confusion when they did the exit as to when we do what. Um, we also tried unsuccessfully, unfortunately, with a couple of attorneys that were supposed to know. They never did their job. Well, he could say that. Um, but we were never satisfied. Okay, so we moved from one to another one, and, and now we have, we have Kate, and I have full confidence that, that Kate and her firm are going to be able to help us navigate through this. Um, is there anything else? No, I'm on it, and I'm going to make this a priority for sure. Okay. Is, so just, uh, I'm not speaking for anyone other than myself, so what's the specific next step, and when is that next step going to happen? The first next step is, while well, we authorized a, Attorney <clears throat> Federoff to work directly with the cable committee so that they can collect the information, she's also going to have 
Um, we've authorized her to talk with Comcast to get whatever they have for documentation, talk about what are the next steps on that side, and then come back and, and let us know. Okay. Okay? Right. So, yes. Do you need anything from us as residents, like any letters saying that we've been trying to get them to come up and they're not willing to, or do you need us to do anything? I don't think that would be, um, that's not necessary right now, but should I have that need, I can work with Jer Jerry, where did he go, Jerry, um, to, to get that, you know, undertaken. But I don't need that now, for sure. Okay. Yes. And what's Unitil's role? Well, so that's, we're checking into that. that's one of the things that we need to look at. We know that there's one poll that doesn't exist. Um, I, I don't know what the answer to that question would be. Um, we also know that there's a make ready that is supposed to happen on the part of Unitil to be able to connect the cable. Um, and it's pointing fingers back and forth um, or Unitil isn't caring about that because it's not their problem, whatever it is. Um, we're going to ask Kate to, to work through this. Is it correct that uh, Comcast agreed to provide cable for 100% of the town? Well, I don't think they ever agreed to that initially. Oh, really? No, no. That it was always that there were areas that were not accessible for them. But my. <laughs> Are they defined? Where. Pardon me? Are they defined? Um, yeah, it's it's basically where you guys are. And, and, where are uh, I'm from? Mm, yeah. It's based on economic feasibility. And their, That's right. And they, they, look, they look for a certain density yeah. in yeah. the yeah. area. Yeah. It's got to be worth their while in terms of the work that they're putting yeah. into it. However, um, I've been to several conferences that the state has put on and one of the things that I've seen um, or heard a lot of is um, lots of folks especially Western Mass patting themselves on the back along with you know with the administration uh, saying isn't this wonderful we're getting all these people access to to the internet and um, if they can do it out there we can we can fill in the blanks here. Uh, there's, there's no reason why we can't. Yes. About uh, a month and a half, two months ago, the cable committee sent a letter to the governor's office about not having cable because in the governor's re-election bid, I want every student in Massachusetts to have high-speed internet. I, was there any response from that letter that was sent? Um, who sent the letter? The cable committee. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, but there are other ways to, to, to reach that if it becomes necessary. I think that we'll start off with what Kate's doing and, and go from there. Well, it okay. hasn't worked in the past. I don't know why it's going to work in the future. I guess I'm just an optimist, John. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank I will you. not take no for an answer. How's that? I yeah. <laughs> it just it's not logical to me to take no for an answer. There's got to be a way to resolve it. And this is the first time we had a lawyer actually come to a, the meeting when we had this on the agenda. It's been on the agenda, I think, half a dozen times since I started. Yeah. Um, and to no response. So back so to my this, comment. Before. Believe it or not, this is action. <laughs> But I look forward to more. And I know you've waited a long time, and, and, and I'm, I'm really sorry on behalf of the town that that, that is the case, but it's it's one of our one of our goals. We're going to get there. Yes. How will we be made aware of updates and what's happening? Um, well, I can't they, they tell they you to watch us on cable. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> I'd ask that the cable commission keep yeah. keep them updated. Um, oh my God! I can't even picture not having internet access. Thank you. Yeah. I just yeah. I just can't. <laughs> I mean, terrible. it's so much a part of a part of everyday life. It's it. I I can't even fathom it. I am really sorry about that. Um, 
Do we have <laughs> Do we have a list of your names and phone numbers? No, I don't know. For lack of anything better at this point, your phones work okay, right? <laughs> okay. Um, maybe maybe if if we could circulate a a piece of paper and you can put your name, address and phone number, please. Okay. And email. Hmm? Do you want email as well? Sure. Uh, just as a matter of, of interest, do you know roughly how many polls we're talking about that would need to be upgraded? No idea. I, I, I did a, an informal study of all those polls, and I do believe there are about 175 polls from the corner of Wyman Road to the very end of. Uh, Vinton Bond Road, and that also included Sauna Row and the three houses on Bayberry Hill. I wish um, I wish we knew how much money we're talking about. Yeah, you know that that um, I, I I don't have enough answers. Well, if you compare those poles and compare the poles that run along Main Street that are overloaded. The poles that are up on our end of town are in much better shape than the ones that run along Main Street that already has cable. I'm sure it has more to do with Unitil having to do the work. It has both to do with, and then Comcast approving that the, there is no feedback between the power that's overhead and their lines. It, and it's the distance between the I, two. I think the easiest way to just Drive it is we need a lawyer to pressure the yeah. three parties to work together. But first, we've got to put the puzzle pieces yeah. together. So, it's, so. so, this is step one, and we'll get to the next steps and lay, lay out a plan as best we can in the next couple months. Can you create a time frame for at least your next step so that we have something to look at in terms of a goal? I can't right now. I, I can't right now until Kate starts getting all the documentation together and having a conversation with Comcast. Would would have no idea yet. Mm -hmm. um, my goal was yesterday, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mine too. Mm. Okay. Any other questions on that? I just have more of a comment. We we went through this at our last the town we lived in in Westminster. There was four houses on our road, mile and a half road, and Comcast said absolutely we will not put uh, cable up there. They made a sign up petition saying we would pay for it if they did it and then they came and did it for free after the fact so the financial aspect of it's not always the case i mean there's quite a few houses on our road compared to where we were and like i said they ran for four houses they ran a mile and a half of cable so wow. with poles so some fighting can make it happen yeah we gotta get our ducks in a row first thank you okay thank you thank you for trying to be patient good luck Good people don't need good luck. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to revisit it since you had already talked about it. We really appreciate it's that. It's been one of our goals since we started this year, so we have not forgotten. Call Westminster, get some tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you could do. Look at who organized and how they did it. Power in numbers. Thank you. Okay, sorry about that. We pushed it along because we were... Chief Bailey and, and, and Jay, I apologize, but... Okay. Well, the Reader's Digest version is we had a 7% increase in the, um, the overall police budget, driven largely in, in part to uh, changes in the CBA being incorporated into uh, yeah. <clears throat> the, fiscal 20, uh, the fiscal 20 budget. Yeah, I'm just writing my neighbors on um, there. There were a couple other slight um, things that, uh, that actually added into it as well. Yeah. One of them is the continuing effort to try and unpack the communications budget and really start to divvy up where those responsibilities lie. Uh, the goal overall is to try and turn that communications budget into an IT slash 
communications budget where it, it houses public safety IT and public safety communications and we're well on the way um, we've done a lot of work in that regard this time one of the employee the only employee left in that budget is actually a police department employee so we sucked that position out of that budget and placed it in here and you'll see the offset I think uh, I think we saw that in something that we were going over at the budget with Jim and and he pointed that one out I think that other than that there's only some some very slight um, increases but largely are um, CBA changes with the uh, with the collective bargaining unit. Okay. Easy one. And the chart that you have with the number of employees. Sure, that's a, I, I updated that. Um, I actually looked at it again today. It's accurate. Um, we've got uh, we've got a number of openings uh, or vacant positions, but they're filled with people in, in currently in. Um, in undergoing background investigations after being uh, put through our hiring process, they're just in background. The problem, in, and I'm beating this horse again, but the problem is, is there is certainly a lag between our ability to test and hire and subsequently staff the department because you have that academy lag and, and that kind of thing. We had a young lady start the academy on Monday. Uh, we have an, uh, secured a spot for the end of May for another employee, uh, and then we have somebody in the pike for our opening from uh, on Jim Marsh and recent retirement. So all our positions, if everybody bakes background, are, are, are full, um, but uh, certainly it's an ongoing effort for us to keep that recruiting uh, up and running uh, because we need to be ready when someone does pull the pin and not be left on our heels. So you, the, the recruit that you have that just started the academy, where is that academy? That one is in Reading. The one that we have uh, reserved a spot for in May is in Lowell. The only other one that makes sense uh, for us to send people to is one in Haverhill. Uh, those three are really the only ones that are within commuter distance that make sense that operate, have actually offered and have put on um, academies. So if the rhythm stays the same, I, I should be able to put another one through um, either, either in late May if I can get that one done, or if not, it will be uh, uh, four or five months after that. So that, that and why four or five months again? Because we're playing the game between those three and when they schedule. And they schedule them generally in six-month increments, and they're staggered but not, not completely staggered. So we could tap into one on the other side of the state, maybe Randolph or something along them lines, but the logistics of somebody commuting there every day is, is, a, uh, is an and, issue. And, and tell me again, I know you, you said this before, but I, I need it refreshed, please. Um, why... Are they so infrequent nearby? Well, is it because, and who's the organization? What's the organization? MPTC, which is Municipal Police Training Council. Okay. And, and they, they run. And that's they a state those, agency. It is. And it's they fill them fairly regularly, but they they need they pick and add people on. They're not going to run an academy with. Ten officers. They wait till they fill it. And like Jay said, they're they're in different parts of the state. We left out with Officer Lowe. Uh, Jay found him a position. Was that he lived in Med Medford, so driving to Randolph wasn't as big of a right. deal. But they are they have a regional system, really, is what it boils down to. The one in Boylston, they have not offered a full time academy for. It. I'll tap. What do you think? Two years, maybe. Right. Something like that. So. That one closed. That was the most convenient for us from a from a commuter standpoint. So we we really are limited um, in our ability. Uh, we were able to make contact with Lowell, and they have a Lowell Police Academy that is run by the police department in Lowell, sanctioned by MPTC. And I was able to secure a spot in that one. But suffice to say, it's a, it's a it's a balancing act just to try and get one geographically close enough to us to make it work. Um, and they happen and they run six months at a time. So if we use the same one. Conceivably, we'd only get an opening every six months, where we, we open it up a little bit and go to Methuen, or mean, or Haverhill, and go down to uh, Lowell. We can kind of get it quicker than six months, but not really. And when you factor in field training time with the officer as well, you're really talking about a nine-month to one-year lag in the time that a position opens for us, and that I can actually have somebody working a call by themselves. It's darn near a year. That um, that just is not acceptable. Um, Chief, would it be worth us look, revamping our reserve force so that we hire some new recruits 
So you, you haven't done the background check. You have new reserves in the fight that we could probably hire as full-time officers at a later date. You already know how they're working, well, so you get ahead of it. I, I don't want this to be a problem-solving session because we're really <coughs> concentrating on budget, but my reason for being concerned about accelerating that process is logically, and tell me if I'm wrong, but logically, if we don't have a full force, we're spending more money in overtime. Well, without a doubt. That's correct. Okay. We are hemorrhaging overtime. That does not make sense to me no. from a financial exactly. perspective. Okay? So um, it's important for us to get to full staff or close to full staff, and it's important for us to do that as expediently as possible. So um, I... Th that's where I was coming from in, in saying that. Um, I'm just hoping it, it's in the back of my mind right now and what other kinds of activism, if any, we could do One to bring pressure to bear on that. Certainly the thing we, we've talked about too is, is uh, maybe trying to hire full-time people, but the only way that's going to happen is if you give incentive. If somebody is a good officer in a, in a, in a job, and they may want to come this way because it's closer to home, they're familiar with the area, but they're getting paid more where they are. Uh, but that's been done in different parts of the yeah, country. Yeah, it's a common thing that's being uh, used. To try to this be is, attractive to yeah, this is not. We're not alone in this in this issue on the both fronts, on the one, the, the difficulty in recruiting, but also in the limitations of the academy. And again, those spots are 60 ahead. Once you get to 61, 62, you're queued up and waiting another six months. We're not alone. Mm -hmm. Every peer I talk to has that same thing. So you do have some towns that are offering signing bonuses and, and things of that nature to try and incentivize and sweeten the pot, if you will. I'd rather fix the other part. But that, yeah, so certainly conversations with the state rep. We are not the only town that is bringing this to our attention, uh, offering an academy out, out of the Boylston um, Academy building would be our preference. It is something that we were asked to, uh, we have asked on a number of different occasions why. Really can't even get any good answers as to why it is not funding. It does seem like it's a funding issue for MPTC. Our tuition is only $3,000, and you know darn well that probably doesn't cover the cost um, of, of uh, six months of full time training for an officer. Uh, so I do think it's a funding issue. We've brought it, both of us have brought it up every time we've had an opportunity uh, with politicians, but that's really where the issue lies. Okay. Mm -hmm. we some yeah. On the on the part time front, it is worth worth talking about. We have explored that. <coughs> One of the things that's taken place on the reserve front is they have increased the amount of hours required for reserve certifications pretty significantly. We actually had two people queued up and offered to sponsor them to go through the reserve academy and then come on in, in much in the way that uh, Tad had, had just explained. The problem is the commitment on that end almost makes that a push where the average person cannot afford to spend, I want to say it was three nights a week for four hours a night, and then all day Saturday, all day Sunday for four months, or something crazy like that. Um, so the both candidates that we had um, in that could not make that level of commitment and decided to stay in the hiring pool waiting for our next full-time slot uh, rather than do the reserve thing. So I'm not sure if that model needs adjusting or looking at it. We're certainly open to all those options because we do recognize the uh, dire need we are in uh, with staffing, but. I, I've been using the analogy as silly as it is, is that I'm out in the cornfield and you can come out there and ask me to get the crop to grow a little quicker, but it's not happening. It takes a certain amount of time and that is really where we're at. Well, maybe it needs an injection. It would be nice. <laughs> it would be nice. We'll work on it. Question. How many do you have full-time offices right now? Um, this is on the, on the FinCon. So, do we have an extra? I already wrote all over mine. <laughs> it just, it just says. So, if you look at the authorized for fiscal 19 column, that's what we're authorized. Uh, four positions, and the actual is in the column all the way to the right. So we have the chief of police, a deputy, a lieutenant. We have we have two sergeant oh, two sergeant spots. We have one that's filled. We have seven patrol officers. We have one at the school, and then we have six reserves. And this does not count the three that just got hired in the 
Academy. So we actually have uh, one. It, it actually it actually does. This is the, this is current. You'll see the openings where the 13 to 16. Uh, we have one. We actually have two full time openings right now with with uh, with candidates slotted for both of those slots. And then one is an empty records clerk that we're not going to fill. Well, we're getting there. So yeah, it's yeah. just taking a long time. And again, you know, if I if I was finished their background this afternoon, I'm still queuing them up and waiting until May. There's literally something done every day when it comes to uh, uh, recruitment and retention and or hiring a background or something along those lines. Okay. Consumes my day. So right now you have seven, and the three, if they come on, you'd have a total of ten offices, correct? Mm. Right. That's not counting your lieutenant. Mm. You've got thirteen here, though. So you're talking about yeah, but I'm just talking officers? patrol officers. Right. That would bring us up to the allocated nine. Well, you have. And then one the two the that are in the academy that. would bring you up to the nine. There's only one in the academy. One in the yeah. academy. Yeah. So we have the two spots, which if you look at that patrol officer's line, those two spots that are in background would bring that seven to the nine. And then the rest is um, sergeants or command staff. <coughs> okay, I'm still confused. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure was... of the question. Is, it, is the question of how many sworn patrol officers we have or total sworn? Well, here, patrol officers, you have seven. Correct. We have seven patrol officers as okay. of right now that are that are working. Correct. Correct. Yep. And you said, correct me if I'm wrong, that you hired three that need to go to the academy? No, we have two in background. Oh, there is okay. one. There is one in the academy presently. Nobody's hired. The one in the academy is right. hired. Is hired, but not. No, but those, th but there's a total of three, correct? No, there's a total of, we have two openings right now. And of those two openings, they are in the background. They're not hired. That's why it's seven and not nine. Okay. So you already hired. counted Correct. the one that's in the academy. Hired. He's hired. She, okay. She's hired. Yeah, yeah we're paying for her. All right. So the two vacancies we have are in background, although <coughs> and slated to get hired, but so I. So they're not getting not paid, hired. and we're paying overtime. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Because we can't get these on on board quick enough. I'm all set. Okay. I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right, Finn, I'm all set. Joe. Yep, I'm good. And Recreation Commission is next. 2.3. Our budget is our budget. You pay for, <laughs> <Your budget is laughs> you pay for, you pay for the director's salary and, and we have a 2500 expense account. Can we get that in here? So, budget. And this is what we talked about the other day, right? Yes. The only thing we talked about was increasing the the portion that comes out of. But, yeah, the increasing the thirty thousand. That they can. What do you What do you have currently in your reserve fund? Do you know? I asked I asked Jim the other day and, and I wasn't able to get the information yet for tonight. In the revolving? In the revolving thing. I don't know what we currently Okay. Have. All right. Well, that was the one question we had in our work session was yeah. to see what we could do to increase that so you could collect more. You mean Joe, did you have any questions? Expenses you mean? Refresh me, Joe. What we talked about Saturday? We're talking about the revolving fund. We're talking about yeah. um, the uh, how you paid the employees and the sum help, and that can't all came out of the revolving fund. Correct. Mm -hmm. yes. Isn't it, that's a, a town meeting vote, right? Where we give a number. A number is given for the maximum that we can spend. Yes. That's yeah. correct. And, and we are increase. looking to increase that. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Jim Absolutely. explained that yes. too. 
he explained that as well, so to authorize you to collect more, a yes. higher amount. Okay. Our only open question was that dollar figure, what that actually yes. is. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I don't have the exact That's numbers, okay. um, That's right. but I do. I do know that we we are not revolving as much as we should be. Like I know that we have more money to spend. I understand because our programs have increased. Oh, good. So that's why we had to ask for additional funds last year because we had the additional staffing because now we have people working so, regularly. So, so, so things are, are more self-sufficient now? Is that what you're saying? For our staffing, yeah, good. for for the staff for covering each of theirs. Um, and I know that I think we're in the same spot this year where we're going to have to look at that again. But yes, we cover all of the staff pay through the programs. Is that what you guys were? Yep. What yep. Ben was looking for? Yep. Yeah. 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 So yeah. yes, all the all of the um, fractional and seasonal comes through the revolving fund as part of the operations for programming. Okay. I have no questions. No, up to your budget is your budget. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot of no. crazy in our budgets. No. You know, there's not a lot of crazy in all the budgets. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like most of it is pretty easy to explain. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, Jake Boynton here. He is. He's in the back. Come on yes. down. <laughs> Mark, you had sent a, a note asking about another agenda item. Um, are you going to be able to come back? Uh, do you know what time? <laughs> if he has his way, it'll be 7.30. <laughs> I plan on having my way. <laughs> he likes to move it along. And um, and there will be some parts here that we're, skipping we're going to skip here, so. because, because Jim's not here. I can try. Okay. If you, we have our membership meeting tonight, as you know, and we got a couple of fires, yeah, major fires that we're doing after action reports on. So, I really need, I need to be at the station at least for a, a while. Okay. I'll but if you push the other one when we can, right? Yeah. But if you, uh, if you give me a shout. Push what? Which of the other ones? Was that the? Was it an executive session one? Mm-hmm. I guess when does that need to be done? Now. It's, we've been, we've yeah. been kicking this around for three months. It needs to be three months, months, so sooner than that. At day. least discussed. Um, so if, you, if I could ask, kindly ask, if one of you give me a show, give me a call when, sure. you're, when you're done. If I'm available, I can scoot right over from the fire station. Okay. All right. You have some? Mm hmm Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. So what's happening with the budget? So, I'm not sure what you have. In front um, of you. I think the one that the phase one strategic plan budget. The one that I gave Jim this morning. I think it's it's the one that we discussed on okay. Saturday, right? Okay. This is the one where you would be going to the full time paramedic. Yes. And, so. Um, Decreasing your budget by approximately seventeen thousand and an increase in the benefits section. Yes. So I did scrub those numbers today at Jim's request. He sent me an email sometime last week. Uh, as you know, I was on vacation, so I spent the last day and a half scrubbing those numbers, making sure everything is good. And what I discovered was uh, the holiday calculations. We recently signed a uh, contract with the firefighters. And that language changed slightly, and I had not factored that into the strategic plan. Budget. So what's in front of you is updated, and essentially it's there's no reduction in the current fire department's budget. It's even. So the, so the good news oh, okay. is so the good news is it's you add, it's not add costing staff us it anymore. It doesn't cost in the fire department's budget anymore. Where originally I thought we would net about a, a savings of about seventeen thousand. But what I, what I missed in there was the holiday compensation of those people having to work holidays 
because it's a 24-7 service. Mm -hmm. okay. I factored in the holiday pay in the contract. They get paid for every holiday, but then they also get paid if they work Christmas. Okay, so it netted out. It's a net it nets zero. Out zero. Net so the budget zero. you have there in front of you is basically the same as what Jim has in the base budget or whatever you're calling it, mm -hmm. but the numbers have moved around a little bit. Okay. Well, that's similar to what, what Jim yeah. described at our budget meeting the other day. Um, any questions from the FinCom? Uh, the only question we had was the, um, you had under other services, it increased by 2000 I'm not sure where you are on the budget. Um, is it in the worksheet or in what he just gave us? It's in no, I don't this. have what he's got. Um, it's here. It's this line. Yeah. 362. Yeah. Services. Um, I'm not sure either. Because it doesn't look like that in my budget. Other services. Looks like it went. Yeah. It's not going to have so much as the increase. Right. It's 400%. Well, because it looked like it was only 500 before, and now it's only 2,500. Right. So from a from a million dollar budget, I'm going to say I'm not worried about $2,500, right. but... My guess is because that's not in... Let me just look at my budget. Because that's not in my budget, and then I can't speak for Jim, but I think that's where he put my clothing on. Oh. Because in the budget worksheets, it's included the way the forms are set up. All your personal expenses, including uniforms, are in there, but it's not a wage. So when you put, dump it into the actual budget, that that comes out because it's a reimbursement for clothing. Oh, okay. So I think he put it in other, where in, in the that, budget forms it's under payroll. That it's could be because the yeah. uniform allowance got zeroed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it just got moved. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not worried about no, I'm just curious. an item that small. Okay. But, yeah. Let me go. Okay, <coughs> go ahead, do your thing. Hopefully. That's it? Yep. That was easy. <laughs> we don't have you down for anything else, do we? I don't think so. I lost my agenda. I think I put it up there in the printer. Just the executive session at the end, I think. That's what we're working on. Yeah, I don't see for you. Okay. Give me a shout. Welcome back. Okay. <coughs> My goodness. We are moving right along. Board of Health, is is anybody else coming? No, it's just us two. Just you? Okay. <coughs> Not just you. Yes, well, yeah. I mean, I mean was board. coming, but it, I think that she'll be okay if she misses a little bit of it. Are you but sure? she's, yeah, she's on the recycling committee, yeah, under the okay. Board of Health. Um, that's fine. Okay. So, back to the budget, I guess, huh? Most of them are level funded. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you have any? Do you need copies of our budgets? Um, well, we've got the big worksheet that has everything. I just have to find it. <laughs> They're a little sporadic, so I do have copies if you'd like, just to have the different budgets for the board. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And this hasn't changed at all since you submitted it, right? No, it has not. Okay, so tell me what's happening. Nothing, nothing really. I mean, it's all level funded other than, because um, most of this is contracts. So your solid waste and your curbside recycling, that's done, that's the contract with Shaw's. Okay. Um, so again, that's already set in the contract. Landfill maintenance, level, level funded. funded. Uh, a landfill engineering is also, is that? Uh, it's contractual, contract it actually has gone shoulder. down actually, this year. Down. Yep, and then the Schober Board of Health, that's where... A contractual also in. goes up 5%. Yeah, so not really much control over that. And then uh, just the operating budget is, again, just making sure that there's 
something in there for um, salaries should there be an increase? No, nothing. Easy one. And the bells will toll. Mm -hmm. Yes, John. We were okay with the budget to, you know, contingent on the salaries because that's all yeah. to be negotiated. Yeah. Correct. Okay. okay. Wasn't that easy? Yeah. Thank All you. Right. But don't go away. Sue's <laughs> <laughs> um, big question about the crisis in China, right? Yeah. Well, so, it's hard because when you when you go off to these conferences and they're talking about everybody's in a panic about the cost of recycling, I really yeah. So I to know more about it. So I think what the what the, the good news is we're still in our contract till was it June 2020 mm -hmm. right when that one will go out to bid, that's when we really kind of have to worry, I think if anything because yes the price well, is we 2021. Well, I mean, 2021. I mean, it actually is 2021. 2021. I keep saying the wrong year. If we so know if we get two years, coming. yeah. No, that's why we're, that's why we're putting together some information on that. I'm going to be doing some more work with the recycling. I mean, have you committee. have you gotten any more specific information? Uh, no, it's more about the, the crisis in China, it is what it is. That's where the United States was sending a third of their stuff, right? And now they just shut down, they're not taking it. There's other countries that take it, but in, in essence, the issue is it, it's going to hurt Massachusetts. They, um, they are, you know, we could, they're going to see increases in trying to figure out what to do with it. There's already been 70 waivers signed to, guess what, take that recycling and put it in the landfill because they can't house it all. So yeah, it is somewhat of a crisis, but the crisis would really is, is in your backyard because we've got to recycle properly in the first place. We've got to make sure that we're not contaminating. Contamination, Contamination is, is the big issue. Um, and that's why China didn't really want it anymore. Um, that and the bulk of it, I guess, too. So I think what we need to do is we need to also, we're in a good contract where we're not getting penalties and fines for contamination. And Shaw's, we have the people. And Shaw's has said that we are really, a good, our town is actually very good with the contamination rate. So that part, we're not going to be penalized during the rest of this contract in any way. It, it, it's already, you know, this is what we're paying. We get some credit to put towards some bulky items, and that's, you know, so we'll be okay until the end of this contract. What we need to do as a board is be prepared for what's going to come in on the bids and come up with a good bid process that's going to answer some of those questions that right. are out there. Shaw's is a small operation. Uh, the town does love them, but it's been what, um, it's ten now years. in the 10 years in the cycle, they have to actually go up to, we have to go up to bid, not just renew the contract. So. Something to be, be said though for <laughs> yeah. the small town Shaw's actually has, um, they don't have the trucks with the arms, which is a huge problem with the contamination yeah. because you don't have a person that's actually looking. We actually have the advantage of the haulers actually are educated. We have the recycle bin. We have the trash bin. If they see that there's contamination, they leave it. They don't pick it up where a, a automatic arm would. Can you give us an example of what, what would be contamination, just for the, for the public to know what? Plastic bags. Okay. Yep, garden hoses, Huge. coffee cups like Starbucks that aren't recyclables. So, Such as um, styrofoam? Yeah, uh, yeah, we don't do recycling styrofoam. of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we so did. what we, we did, but one we of did. the things that we... Stop buying it. I have a pile in my basement. Stop buying it. I, we could check into that more, but and I can see what we can do with styrofoam again. But it, anyways, with what the contamination is making sure it's really clean stuff that, you know, what people don't know is that it's stuff, the, the list is changing. You can put a pizza bo box in your, your thing now as long as it doesn't have any of those inserts mm -hmm. and it, it's only greasy. Food and inserts you got to take out. So we need to educate. That's key to getting the recycling contamination to minimals. And do you have enough money in your budget with which to educate? We have grants. She does a lot of applying for grants okay. that help Anything, out with that. And that's sufficient, right? At this time. Good job. Yeah. And what we want to do, one of that part of that education, and we should give a um, shout out, is to the uh, Recycle, I'm going to get the website, I don't want to say it wrong. Recycle Smart. Recycle Smart MA or just MA. A dot, dot org. org. Dot org? Yes. Okay. Recycle Smart MA dot org. 
you can go in there and throw an item in, which I did today, to see if egg cartons, guess what, those are recyclable. Is that on so, our website? Is that link on our website? Yes. Okay. So yes, so go to the Board of Health the website. Those styrofoam egg cartons. <laughs> yeah, the no, it was the cardboard. I did specifically cardboard. select cardboard on my, and then that's what's great about the tool. You can go, if you have a question, you don't know what to do, <coughs> go in, throw it in there, it gives you choices to select between cardboard and styrofoam egg cartons, mm -hmm. and it'll tell you whether it's recyclable or not. So we want to get that word out there and promote that more to stick it, get, get people to start, those who have cable, can start using and looking this up. <laughs> we, we also have used some of the grant funds to help with buying some educational materials for the schools, and we have some tumblers yeah. that we've ordered to help with the, with the tumblers and the plastic straws and whatnot, and those will be given out as prizes for the textile competition. They also have those logos yeah. all on the back of them. We they have towns and recycle, yeah. and then they have the recycle smart on the other side. So we are also going to be, um, we will come out with a Facebook media page, but it will be no comments. It will be just mm -hmm. posting that. Kyle will be throwing out regular stuff. We have um, the recycling committee, like Erica Art, is throwing stuff out there um, on some of the other pages as she comes across, you know, articles or updates uh, to share through that social media. Um, we also, I think, you know, we should probably start holding some public meetings too and trying to be a little bit more available to the public if they want to come in and talk like about the their using concerns. The, little, the kids. Yep. They, they, oh, they're because awesome they with teach that. their parents when they uh -huh. go home. Uh -huh. Yeah, mine did that to me too. Um, yeah, so using the grant funds, making sure that we have a comprehensive bid package, addressing those issues when the time comes. And just keep monitoring some of the things that are going on. DEP and uh, waste divers, some you know good resources that we use. We've also developed holler regulations. Yes. And we're going to be figuring out what we're doing with the bylaw, too. Yes. The bi we're going to be updating our bylaw, or I don't want to say too many things, but it needs, a, it, needs an old, an, it needs an overhaul. Okay. So we're working on those as well to kind of address some of the education. That will actually education. be coming to the town meeting um, next month in yeah. April. The what? Oh, the, more an article for the recycling bylaw mm -hmm. to okay, be updated. That's already in the works? Yes. Nice. Yeah. So that would be, that's also revamped in a way so that's more, you know, still an, another educational piece. Excellent. Good. So I think that's kind so of not in a not plastic ba bags yet? You know, that, that's funny because we were just talking about that. That was on our agenda last year, but the state was going to come out with a mass, mass, the state of mass was going to come out with a ban. And it, I was just looking today, and I think it seems like it didn't come out, it didn't pass. And I was like, well, guess what, we're putting back on the agenda. So thank, yeah. thank you for that reminder. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was took us. I would have thought that would have passed. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why we took it off. Yeah. We figured we'd let the state handle it. And at the state level, if they had done that, they would, but there are 93 towns in Massachusetts that have some form Guys. of bylaw. So um, we can take another look at that, too. It could be Monica, anywhere. Did you have a question? Well, I on the re, uh, plastic bag ban, I am pretty sure I signed a petition for a warrant article to ban plastic bags. When? This year? Yeah, like last week. I don't know anything about but that. But I don't know if that if it made it to to. I haven't uh, to seen warrant. it yet. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I haven't okay. seen it either. All right. Could be a, here, could so be a citizen. I believe it was. Okay. I, I haven't seen the... Um, I've just heard rumors about I, it. I, I heard that there were I, some petition articles, but I have not seen them. Well, if you... Who would be the one to see that next, Jim? Jim? So let's say we'll ask him to reach out to us with whoever's um, putting that petition, because it would be nice if they would yeah, come the to the board. The with petition articles sometimes is that they have to be worded very carefully, and, and, um, and we typically don't get involved in rewording petitioners' articles. Mm -hmm. We actually had... Um, you know, so, I, I mean, sometimes, it's just my my opinion, but sometimes I think we're better off going through someone like you guys, well, because it, then you have access to town council. Yes. As yeah, to how I think to they would. properly word things, but we'll see. Have not seen it yet. Well, that's what I'd say. I'd like to see it and then not, you know, yeah. Talk to if we could get that person to then maybe attend the public meeting, and um, partner with them. You know, try to see what we can do because mm -hmm. it could get voted down, and then what are the next steps? That's right. So might be nice to have a plan. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, you're Excellent. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.
you want me to keep sending you things when I get them? I forwarded um, you a couple of meetings that have come up. Yeah, I or think what we'd like to do for that stuff by yourself. Well, she gets some too, so I'm not sure if they're duplicates. So I do need you get to find out from the MMA. Sometimes it's it's if rather I sporadic. Them, I'll, I'll pass them on. I, okay. I am attending a, a seminar next month, I believe, at the end at end of this month, actually, the end on the recycling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just keep us up to date. Yeah. Okay. We'd like to kind of like kind of control like, do we go to this one? We don't want to go to all of these ones. Oh, yes, no. I did get that email though. He said, she said, or whatever that there was another one coming out. Whoever the person was that sent it to you, but it do, I don't want them. I think sometimes it can be repetitive, or they're having them in different areas. So. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, they, just trying to have cover them in different locations. Yeah. So, and then nice that that we can get updates would be great. But I was also looking at one of them would be what's that can you uh, municipalities and board of health can is it geared towards that i would rather see that than just uh, oh that was a different one that i was talking about okay i want to make sure that what we're getting is uh yeah we got a lot of topics in board of health this one's not recycling <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah we want to make sure that we're not attending duplicates okay too many thank you that was, uh, I, 3-1, review approved marijuana ballot questions for the planning board. You're up. Madam Chairman, just sort of as background, um, the planning board desires to let the citizens of Townsend determine the fate of recreational marijuana establishments in the town of Townsend. To that effect, we basically had put on the special town meeting um, a warrant to extend our moratorium until June of this year. Second, in the event that the Attorney General may um, reject that moratorium, um, we put forward a bylaw on recreational marijuana that was passed by the town at the special town meeting. Continuing to follow up on our plans, um, we are proposing seven ballot questions that individually ask the town residents to go ahead and determine whether or not they want a particular form of a recreational marijuana establishment, i.e. retail facility, test facility, cultivation, etc. And so we had town council draft ballot questions to appear on our upcoming ballot. Um, do you have copies of those? And so the um, planning board is petitioning the selectmen, with all due respect, to include that on our um, upcoming ballot. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, I read them. Um, I think they were very well thought out and read perfectly, and you gave the explanation as to what the yes vote means and what the no vote means, because that's that's going to be quite confusing to most people. Uh, and, um, May I approach that, Chairman? Mm -hmm. I got it. Oh, okay. I think I don't. I don't know why it's not in here. Thank you. So this is just the next step in the process you laid out. Exactly. Last time. Okay. And then we also, um, um, town council had also drafted the appropriate articles for the town meeting that's going to follow the vote yes. and um, we so submitted those. that's kind of like a what if scenario, right? If you and vote this way, this is what's going to be taken up at the town meeting? If, if for example, the town residents decide to ban, let's just say, retail establishments of the town of Townsend or to amend the bylaw, then that then has to be passed at the town meeting. So it requires a you know a vote at the ballot and then a same the same vote at the town meeting yeah so have you got them worded two ways then no so it, it, it essentially what the ballot questions and and for the folks at home it's going to be a little bit cumbersome because the state law requires you to really spell out what your vote will mean at the ballot um, by giving a summary that we draft to explain it um, as well as the actual the text of the bylaw as it would appear in your code should it pass at both 
the election and the town meeting. And so what these do is it's a it's a smattering of questions. So it's I think seven or is it eight questions it's seven? seven. Um, and essentially it says uh, you know shall no it doesn't say it says um, yeah thank you <laughs> that's <laughs> that's helpful. So essentially what you have is the first question. Here's an example. Shall the town of Townsend adopt the following amendment to the zoning bylaw to prohibit recreational marijuana cultivators? So that's one type of marijuana establishment. And then it gives, um, it says a yes vote will prohibit recreational marijuana, which is a little bit counterintuitive, and that's why the they have you write this summary. Is. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because if you're passing a, a, a bylaw to ban it, you actually have to vote yes, even though you don't want marijuana. So um, it explains that, and it gives a summary, and it gives the text, and the text of the bylaw says, recreational marijuana cultivators, as defined as blah, 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 shall be prohibited in the town, in all the districts. So if the answer to that question based on the election is a no vote then obviously at the town meeting um you're going to vote to pass over the article okay. which prohibits the bylaw because you don't have the requisite authority okay. if that makes sense mm -hmm. that does um okay. basically the summary is that we have all of our bases covered if a yes or no vote is exactly but but all of us don't understand things as well as you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Um, he, he looks at all the details, and I, I do too, but it is confusing. It, it is confusing. And um, just in the spirit of, of trying to educate folks, this is the summary, but this is, this is the summary that is in still in legalese, if you will. Um, yeah, that, that was one thing I, I kind of thought of when we were going through this: is if the planning board would have another public session where before the election to have another education type um, question and answer where Kate could be president, actually explain it um, in a little bit more detail if people did have questions before the ballot, because. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody that's voted seen ballot questions before, and you get in there, and you're like, okay, if I say yes this way, and you read the whole text, you're like, no, I'm not ready to make that decision. Yeah, I, I've had my kids started. say, if I want to do this, which one do I do? Okay, before they leave in the car to come down to vote, which which one? If this is what I want to do, which one do I pick? Okay, right. so and, and I think what's confusing, it's confusing to me. When I think of recreational marijuana, I think of a pot shop, okay? Um, but when I read this, I say, oh, there's different kinds of mar recreational marijuana facilities, mm -hmm. all right? So those different kinds are the growing kind, mm -hmm. the manufacturing, manufacturing kind. kind. What? Testing. How do you manufacture it? Well, you, you take, you... <laughs> You're basically harvesting you, you grow it. it. It's a plant. I know, but right? you're harvesting as a crop, but you're also using it for other purposes. So the CBD oils. Well, are that's not from what that. it said. Well, oh, that's that's what it the, is. Yeah, the manufacturers like they'll create it, CDB, CBD oils are actually really low percentage of THC mm -hmm. that so they don't have the hallucinogenic um, properties of it. I hope not. But They're selling can, it everywhere. Right. You can you can <laughs> buy that um, regularly, although it's supposed to be regulated by Department of Ag, but I don't want to deviate. But um, they take the marijuana product and they put it into tinctures and it actually has the full level of THC. So tinctures and um, oils that you can put on your um, body where your aches and pains are. Yeah. Um, they, they, they basically they have don't waste any part that you of the make. Plant. So that's Okay, so that would be the smoking. manufacturer yeah. that manipulates it into other yeah. things. Then you, then you have a testing facility, which is basically a QA, you know, QC facility. It has a mass spectrometer that measures the the potency and the you're THC talking levels. science again i'm sorry it's what i okay. do <laughs> <laughs> um, so outside of the recreational pot shop if you will mm -hmm. all the other facilities that you're talking about here are closed to the public there's no access there's no uh, they're very high security um there's 
it's not like you can you're driving down the street and you see this big sign that says we're testing pot here and the growing the growing facility is really a boxed in it's a building there's not facility. a facility it's in the country that is outside okay so it's not going to be like the cornfields that no, we're used they're to not seeing replacing a farm with a, a okay. pot farm because All right. the growing this season is, is 24 7 is 365 inside okay and they want to maximize their growth so the tell plants. me again what are, what are the different ones retail establishments okay which is what i would call a pot shop Cultivation, manufacturing, research and development, mm -hmm. test, distribution. The transporters, yep. Transporters, and I'm missing one. No, no, no that's a separate. It's the one um, retailers, oh, cultivators, right. manufacturers. All of the, it's the catch-all. All oh, the and that, yeah, exactly, the catch-all. The catch-all. Catch What's a catch-all? So Something anything that doesn't fit into any of those categories. Somebody will so if somebody came up with a different way, but well, I want to open this kind of. St I can use it for this. Yeah. So so interestingly, interestingly enough, um, in 94G, the research facilities weren't expressly set out, um, but it, they came to the conclusion that you might need a research facility who's going to determine what kind of products are are receptive to accepting marijuana or something like that um, as opposed to the testing facilities which are to make sure that the products are accurately identifying the amount of THC and other kinds of if there are um, contaminants that are affecting the plants so that's a, a great example of something that they didn't contemplate originally um, now they've made it a separate license but something else could crop up no pun. Um, no pun intended. Right? Okay, so <laughs> just in, in plain language is what I'm suggesting. Okay, just like we talked about it, so you dumbed it down for me a little bit, and that helps. Okay. Um, when, when, when do the ballot questions need to be finalized by? Uh, March 20th. March 20th. Is when I will. That's the last day to withdraw. Okay. I, so. So um, I'll take the action item to go back to the board and then schedule a public hearing. Um, and then we can see if we can actually have it televised to go through the pallet questions. I, I think but will the, that um, change the questions itself? No. But, but I, I don't think there's, I think they're as plainly written as you could possibly get. Right. So. I, don't, I don't think you're gonna, you're gonna have to worry about this. I mean, I think this is the way it, it's going to be. Yeah, but clearly, I think I want to have a public hearing before. Yeah, you know, a or, meeting to or publicly I mean, you, ask people to come to your your meeting if they have, or just do a meeting on. I would think that if we wanted to educate the public, which was the goal, that maybe if we could get it televised at mm -hmm, the same time. Mm -hmm. So let me let me work with Beth to see what we can do. I mean, even even if it's an agenda item or something that we can get it televised to get the most outreach to the community as possible so because, that they're better informed I, or they're you know they're informed when they go to the well, ballot box. In the, the I one, mean what you don't want is for poor Kathy's election workers to get the questions. You know, I mean that's not something that yeah. that they can really get involved in, I you know. Yeah. But but unless they have mom telling them which one to pick out, you know, they're gonna Potentially, they could get there and, and not know. And because it's a, you have to vote yes to ban it. Yeah, it, it is it's a bit confusing. I tried to write them in using colloquial language, you know, tried to, my first pass was, was much more. <laughs> <laughs> much, much more, more difficult. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst offense that we all commit as lawyers. So, um, but I can understand it is a little bit tricky and you want to make sure that you, whether a proponent or an opponent, um, that you've voted the way you want to vote. Mm -hmm. um, so, so your intentions captured. Perhaps this is a, a dumb question. Is there anything or how could we um, encourage any like Neshoba voice or anything like that to uh, put any sort of an article out or anything? Is there any other way to reach the public that you can write an editorial anytime you want. Yeah, I'm just trying to think something that's on front page or something that gets read. No, unless you're going to pay for it. All right. Okay, so we'll we'll see what we can do with the a challenge has been given. Okay.
Understood. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, it's just my opinion. Yeah. But I think it would help. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, it can't hurt. Let's put it that way. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So do we have to vote on this? I guess so. To put it on the ballot officially? I move the board approve um, the marijuana ballot question for the from the planning board to be put on the upcoming ballot with the town clerk. Do you need the date on that? <coughs> Kathy, what's the date of the election? I mean April twenty second. April April twenty second, two thousand nineteen. I'll second that. Um any other discussion? Uh, nope, I'm not so all that in, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> um, your opinion, Town Administrator Job Description 4.1 and 4.2, list of specific expectations. Did you do your homework? I did. You have, I gave you a copy. You did. Where did I put it? My responsibility once I give it to you. <laughs> I, however, have a second if you need it. I have fun. I don't know where it is. I've got three files because I don't want to lose anything and I lose it. It's difficult. It's not easy. No, this is all my budget stuff. Here it is. Yep, that's it. So what I did, just to explain. Should we take these together? Yes. Okay. Um, so basically what I did is I took the comments. And Kate, I can give you one too if you want them. Oh, okay. Since it's you got the crappy one, I'm sorry. Okay, no, no. Um, so I took the original that we talked about. I took the pieces that we marked up. Um, for instance, I'll for, use the, the first one is... Um, are you looking at the contract now, or are you look, you're not looking at the contract? No, just the job description. Job description. So third paragraph down, um, we had had some discussion about um, goals and objectives. Where's the job description? It's in here. The red's just track changes, so it doesn't oh, change anything. Oh, the I got you. All right. That's it. The original stuff is still in. It's just All right. red lined out. Um, so I went through and when the, the changed some of the comments that we had made on the, the previous one. Mm -hmm. um, I took the chart that you gave and I inserted either language within a current paragraph or created a new one altogether that um, went through. So I consolidated as best I could from your list. Mm -hmm. I left out the goals because those are going to be talked about in the expectations piece so that it wouldn't be in the job description. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want you to Review it, I guess, is the next step, um, and see what you want to add or change to it. So, because um, I know I'm taking your language and putting it into my words and typing it. So that's all right. Um, some were a little bit redundant, in my opinion, but um, it's basically just. So basically, we're taking some of the things that I had on my list and incorporating it into the job description. Correct. Okay. Um, to make sure it's covered. To make sure it's covered, it's um, it's not rea it's more proactive than it was reactive. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what the theme. If you read through it, that's what I was going for. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the bulk of it I didn't change much because the, the, it's really under the essential functions was the only part that I really did some editing. All the other requirements and stuff like that are um, basically the same. And I, I mean, substance I don't think has changed that much. No. Okay. It's just really defining more. Of which. So that's that's the changes to the job description, yep. and then when we start talking about the, um, and I mean it looks fine to me. It makes sense the way that you did it. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can find my little, Sorry. yeah. No, here it is. Nope. 
I have too many worksheets. If you um, if you look at that, I basically what I want to know is, does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right, and you've got it numbered. Yeah. So what? what Just I, in terms of. So what I putting it in there. So like, four, five, six, and ten, I thought fit in this area to spell it out a little bit more detail, and then the sub same with the subsequent ones, so I could keep track of what. Because originally, I didn't have the word document here, and I didn't have your word document there. So, mm -hmm. um, Carolyn recreated the word document for me, so I had something I could work off of. Okay. So that's that was how I. So when I look at the expectations list that I came up with, mm -hmm. you've I, got these marked as goals. I incorporated everything but the goal, what I considered goals. So I moved those to the expectation piece of it where we'd be setting his goals and expectations for the year for the position okay and how you see these are all goals as far as I'm concerned but you're saying that it's all part of the job description I incorporate it in the job description so it would be reviewable uh, a performance review okay and that would mean that in creating, say, a performance review document, mm -hmm. we could take it directly from the job description. Correct. Okay. Because that ultimately is what we would... That, I mean, that's how do. I wrote, that's how I've written my job descriptions for years, so... Okay. Um, because... This works for me. Um, outside of goals, there's expectations that you should have to do your job. Mm -hmm. um, and if you aren't doing those, I don't care if you accomplished all your goals, you aren't doing your job well. Okay. So, um, so it's a measurement tool. Correct. It becomes a measurement tool. And if you read through what I wrote, that's kind of what mm -hmm. I asked for. Yeah, I can too. see that. I can see that. Was there anything that I had down that you disagreed with that should no, not it, be part of this? No, in some of it, I, some of it, I either consolidated or changed it slightly to fit it in. So it didn't, mm -hmm. it, I, I didn't take this. Basically, I didn't take your document. Just dump it in here. I, I consolidated some change some wording here and there. Um. Yeah, and, and I mean, basically, I just wanted to make sure that what I was thinking mm -hmm. was compatible with your opinion yeah. as well. That, that, and, and that's, think, you know, that's the big I think when you take that home tonight, whenever you do it, yeah. review it, um, yeah. mark it up, I have it electronically, so I can make changes and go from there. I mean, I think I'm good with this. I'm, I'm really good with this. You didn't get a copy of no. this piece. Um, and I can't find the other one. This is yours. I'm not going to take it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think that makes sense. And, and I like that method, but I don't think that it's necessarily our task to, um, to do it with other job descriptions. But I, I'm thinking... It, it's a model I think we should start looking at as far as the I job agree. descriptions, too, because if you... The, our job descriptions are rather bland, I guess, as you will. So that's something I want to work with Labor Council on. Mm -hmm. Structuring. Do you do things like that too? I do. Because mm -hmm. um, I've written enough to know that the, you know some of those look like they were written in 1970. They probably were. <laughs> well, which no. is why you can't find a word document on. Exactly. I can't believe that. So, our, uh, just to update you, our, our goal is to update job descriptions every two to three years oh, to right. keep them current mm -hmm. um, because uh, as I just described they're not yeah and um, and we thought we'd start with the the town administrator because that's the one that reports directly to us so um, that it's a good it's a good task to go through yeah and, so and to you'll, come you'll out find the word the proactive part. quite a bit in there um, I, I agree because that particular position I think requires Proactivity. And it's the same comments I had last night at the school committee. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Same thing. Yeah. You can't keep doing it the same way and expect a different outcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Okay, I'm good. Okay. I'm good with this. Um, maybe we we can put it on the next agenda for. If you um, can send me back your comments, then I can incorporate them. I don't know if we can do that. So yeah, you've got a corn issue there. there. Yes. Yeah. There are just two. So. So review these. Our next meeting, we can and then you can comment. exchange comments at the next meeting, and then just yeah. vote on it. And then yeah. Yeah, okay. pass it as a first reading. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. No
uh, real team effort there, Wayne. Hmm? I said that was a real team effort. Oh, yes, I'm glad they came together. Okay, so 4142, and we will take it up at the next meeting, if you can put that in the notes, yep. that that needs to be on there. Uh, town Administrator updates and reports, there are none. Can we forward these to the, oh God. Um, actually, can we talk about the status of the capital planning report? And the reason I want to talk about it is because one of the capital planning members is here. Yes. Sitting the, next to me. I received a request last week from Lindsay, who's the chair of the planning committee. Capital Planning Committee, um, asking my um, uh, availability, and the date that she gave me was not, I was not available, so I didn't hear anything else if they had a quorum to meet, um, other, or otherwise, so that was the last How many meetings have you had? I've been to one, I think they've had two. Okay. Because there was an invite that went out, I thought, for Saturday's meeting, and Lindsay replied that she'll be in Florida until the end of the month. That was my understanding from the last meeting from with Lindsay. <clears throat> she was so when's the last meeting that you had? Uh, before Christmas. Before. Okay, we have a problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> We have a problem because that capital plan needs to be submitted to us as part of the budget. Um, any suggestions there? <laughs> we have, we have, so who appoints whom? We have the, um, we're done. <laughs> You missed your section. Mission 40, you guys went early? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Everything went well. Okay. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, j just that. Uh, I don't even have the bylaw. I don't even have the bylaw with me. How many days? 60 days before the town meeting. Oh, have you got the policy? Good guy. This is a team effort. Do you have the language of the bylaw? Because sometimes that's critical because... Have you got the bylaw too? I don't think so. I think what I have is the policy that the budget process and policy and there's a section in here about capital planning. Because I was worried about it because we've got a couple items that are in there that I don't know what we would do. I think you that's, pull that's up where the I got the policy on your phone. When 60 days before the town meeting? I think it was that day that Kathy was saying April, April 22nd. But I don't know if the town meeting's in May. It can't be April 22nd. It's, 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 yeah. Well, it's got to be now. <coughs> like within two or three weeks. So depending upon how the bylaw is written, I mean, some, some, it, the language is really super important because there's actually case law on this kind of issue um, and some cases find that it's a mandatory component so you can't react or take town meeting action without certain reports whereas some say well it's just advisory anyway so you can't bind town meetings hands who's the re legislative body for a failure, for an administrative failure? I was under the impression that, well, there was a situation one year yeah. when um, there was actually, the capital planning was required to make a revised plan uh -huh. in order for us to take it up. Yeah. I can take a look at, I mean, we have, um, it really, the language is very, very important, and that decides what dictates here. So I can take a look at the bylaw and um, give you some advice. Oh, no. He's 
just giving it to me on the on the fly. All right. So, Chief, I, I mean, uh, Deputy Chief, I assume that you have um, a request in? We, we have two for fiscal 20. You have? Um, and the rest of them are, are on the outs, meaning 21, 22, but it is part of the plan. And it's important to understand if, it's, if they, those things were not approved, we would have to punt because some of them are, are acute issues. HVAC system, there's, there's not a significant a monetary amount, but so, significant for planning. So were the ones that you're concerned the most about, the, the, the immediate ones, were those on the capital plan yes. last year? Uh, uh, Do you I know what I, I mean? Because it's I, a five-year plan. I think I had to recreate it because I think it was a mess. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Actually, I think I might have it. I don't believe in there. I don't believe as they are, they were. If they were there, they were substantively different. I had to go back with facilities and kind of recreate because it, well, frankly, wasn't done well the year before. Okay. No, so it says no appropriation shall be voted for a capital improvement requested by a department board or committee unless the proposed capital improvement is considered in the committee's report or determined by the board of select or determined by the board of selectmen mm -hmm. upon recommendation of the town administrator to be of an emergency nature. <laughs> well, it's kind of an emergency nature if none of this happened. Yeah. yeah. But some of the items on the list are not of the emergency, emergency nature. They're, nature. they're capital so. improvements. They're not necessarily acute problems. Where we are just happens to be some of them are acute problems. But the ones, it is a continuing kind of plan in place. And but, I know the fire chief and I have worked extensively on a radio project that's ongoing. That's, that's fairly sizable. Um, but the two that I was speaking of that are more <coughs> acute are less money but equally important. So should we have him? Get in touch with Jim. Mm -hmm. the, well, the plan has been submitted. Our plan was submitted back when it was called for. I think but I don't even know who did you submit them to. I, we submit that we submit everything through Carolyn. She kind of channels it out to where it goes. But I know Jim has been. In, we've had conversations about it with, with him before. I can't remember when the deadline was January. I think right. So I think I had to have it in by January, if I'm not mistaken. So it's been. It is there. It's been there for a long time. All the. All the charts and the exact costs are okay all for yours, but I'm thinking I don't know what right. else has been submitted. Had the only thing, the only thing we, thing, thing we had in there, well, otherwise, was the, the stuff we voted on with uh, the highway department, the the tractor piece of equipment they bought. But that was that's, 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 that was anything special. To, that, the only meeting I've been to that was what was voted on at the capital planning. Beyond that, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do there. Um, I guess we just have to give Jim direction to figure this out. Yep. In a hurry. Well, like tomorrow. Okay. Five point two board of selectmen announcements, updates, and reports. Um, I have a few listed. One is I'm withdrawing my article for a f change to a five member board of selectmen. My personal opinion is that the town isn't ready for that yet. Um, and it's probably more appropriate were the town at some point ready to say we want a town manager. Um, but I don't think we're there. Okay. Okay. So that was just an FYI to everybody. Um, budget calendar, um, and I really meant all calendar. Wayne, what's happening with you? We're not meeting next week, that's correct? Correct. I'm not going to be here, so that's out. Um, the 19th, I have to change some plans, but that's not a big deal. Be there. Okay, so 
our next meeting then is the 19th yep. as we had scheduled right correct and we have a meeting this Saturday at 9 o'clock and it's an all boards meeting to talk about for all boards to just kind of get together and share what what's going on with your department or your board and um, and especially from a financial perspective you know kind of an overview of budget or highlight maybe needs that you haven't gotten in the budget okay or what are you thinking of for the future kind of stuff um, a chance for hopefully everybody to get together and and really um, start a sharing because I don't think enough of that has been done okay okay right hand has to know what the left one is doing are you gonna be all tangled up okay so that's Saturday here at nine o'clock okay. okay and beyond that if we were to need an emergency meeting of some sort as a result of the um, discussion we just had on capital plan mm -hmm. are you around the rest of the week I'm here the rest of the week okay five three Clerk, oh, future agenda items. I have a few. I just wanted to know if you had anything. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. I'm not that far ahead. Um, then I have two weeks to do it. I'm not going to worry about it tonight. 5-3, um, clerk, announcements? Oh, Any? Nothing. Okay. Uh, board correspondence. There is a um, piece of correspondence from Comcast. Uh, channel updates and information for users I would suggest that folks um, folks just go on to the Comcast website to find out what's going on with channel changes and 5-5 five five, approval of meeting minutes for February 5th and February 7th and would the board approve the meeting minutes from February 5th, 2019, February 7th, 2019? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's unanimous. 5-6, review and sign payroll and bills payable warrants. Move the board review and sign payroll and bills payable warrants outside of session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And we have some executive sessions. You want to start reading? Oh, here, here we go. I move with the board entering into executive session pursuant with GLC 30AS 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting laws may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position or litigating position on the chair, so declares. And I do, and that's a strategy session in preparation for negotiations for all collective bargaining contracts and personal service contracts. Yep. Second one is executive session pursuant to GLC 30A S 21A3 to discuss with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the bargaining position or litigating position in the chair so declares. She does. The clerical union. Uh, next one is executive session pursuant to GLC 30A S 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to non-union personnel or MOU deputy police chief. And the last one is executive session pursuant to GLC 30A S 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, i.e. the MOU paramedic and we will not be returning to open session. And I will second those, and I need a roll call. We do, know, we, yes. do we need a roll call on each one of them? Uh, you can do it as a combined motion. Okay, all right. Um, Wayne Miller? Yes, on all. And Sulicio, yes. And we will not 